Hello guys, my name is Adam Shadow, and this machine behind me is another extremely compact, fast, and almost one wide tileable design for the USS project I'm currently working on. That's the ultimate storage system I'm developing for the Biotech server, and one important part of it is to pre-sort the boxes for the uh, storage. So, if you remember, this machine here operates on the way that sorts uh, shulker boxes that go through this dropper line and items that go through this one. And depending on the item, it either lets the box go into the storage or not. So, that obviously requires the boxes to be either full or almost full. I decided to make this pre-sorter or maybe fill dependent sorter for shulker boxes or however else you want to name this so that I can achieve this at whatever rate I need. Therefore this is actually one way tellable as you can see almost. Uh, it is how to say it, unlike uh, other designs which are like three blocks wide where you basically have like one chamber to uh, sort the boxes. This can be stacked next to each other therefore you can put a huge load of these and therefore sort out boxes for example the same speed as the storage, which is, uh, if I remember correctly, every 8 game takes, or you can go even crazier if you have some sort of double storage where you have two hoppers, then you can go double the speed, or however high speed you want, because depending on your clock speed, which I will go over in a second, th this machine practically always literally increases its speed when you add it. So two of these are double the speed of one, four of these are again double the speed, which is extremely effective. So what did I mean by clock speed in this design? As you can see these signs here, these are obviously not necessary. They are next to these instant rail lines. These observers here just indicate the type of the instant rail line, like where these are placed, actually matters in some cases. Of course the most efficient one is if they are looking up like this, since that uh, uses up the least amount of blocks and space. Here you have them to the side because underneath here I need to have these observers, and here I have a similar thing. The the reason why this is not one block lower is also special because these observers here trigger from time to time and that would mess up the uh, instant line. You cannot uh, block update the instant rail in uh, certain directions, like I explained in my video about these. And also you don't want to do that because it would then, for example, trigger these pistons more often than they should be triggered. So we need to have this one block higher. These signs are actually the order of how uh, in which these instant rail lines are uh, supposed to be powered. So if you have it empty, so there is no box in here, in this dispenser I have a bunch of empty boxes and completely full boxes. You can also use almost full boxes, like I could for example take out, I'm not sure, one or two, one and a half, something like that uh, of stacks from it to still get uh, the signal strength 14 out of them. That's a special part of this story, uh, machine. I'm not just detecting signal strength 15 when this happens, when the, and the machine also activates 
at signal strength 14. As you can see, this one is at 13, so it can go either 14 or 15. Therefore, this cannot be sadly uh, one white tileable because there is no way of putting these two lines next to each other so that you could de uh, detect two different signal strengths. Because otherwise, for example, this might go to 15 and this might be like 0 or the default 13 and the higher signal strength will still activate this one next to it. So you need to have these lines separated. So one goes above like this and one goes a bit lower. Therefore also the timings are slightly different but that's not an issue since I don't need the boxes to end up in the specific slice. So, what happens with these, when these lines uh, are powered? First of all, these dispensers here dispense a box. I will do this with redstone blocks. As you can, could see, that was very fast. These boxes both were actually full, we got lucky. This is actually completely random. Uh, so, both of them were placed here, then these observers activated and the pistons broke them. Now let's activate the second line. The second line now will move the, these boxes to the side into this water stream. This is the output of the full boxes. This, is the, this dropper line is the output of the empty boxes. You can also use hoppers here. They would need to be one block lower, not here where the water is, that's actually a problem because as you can could see, the items tend to fall so that they slightly peek over this edge and if you have a hopper on this position, uh, it might pick them up. So, as you can see, the full box procedure is uh, done, they are already sorted, let's pick them up. Now we activate the third line, which would break the boxes if there would be any uh, that are almost empty or half empty or however you want to say that. And now the fourth one will let them be picked up by these hoppers, as you can see the torch flickers. And now uh, let's repeat the process. So again, one, it places boxes. Again, now we got a bit lucky, we got uh, two empty boxes. Now we would push the boxes, now they are none, broken. Now we go to the third one, we break them, and uh, we activate this one. And as you can see, our Empty boxes landed in this hopper. Again, if this would get powered over and over, the boxes will eventually get to the dropper. That's not a problem. Because this is also powered when a full box goes through, so it's powered twice as often as it needs to be. So let's do this procedure a couple more times. So one, two, three and four and I think I activated in the wrong order or maybe not these numbers are really small even though I'm using a large screen This would normally be done by a clock. However, the problem is to determine the exact speed because it depends on the movement of these entities. And that's always an issue. If you remember, even in my first videos, I explained how bad the movement of items and entities in this game actually is. 
mostly because of how the collisions are detected. And as you can see, we already emptied the machine. And here we have all of our eight full boxes. And here we should have together 10 empty boxes. So here we have seven, and here we have the other three. So as you can see, this obviously works. And now I want to explain you some other details. The reason why this is so difficult to measure is because the way how a box gets broken, if you follow my crosshair, is the item spawns somewhere in, in the middle, maybe a bit lower. If you remember my video from the 8 times box loader over there, or n times hopper speed box loader, that one used a cauldron to catch the item before it could fly off randomly into the distance. Because that happens with uh, blocks that are broken by pistons, including shulker boxes, or you, you know, if you break them with TNT. And in this case, uh, it changes the time from when this gets broken to when it uh, falls down here. You would need quite a detailed measurement to determine exactly what's the maximum amount of ticks, which I'm not going to do here, because many servers work in different ways, and if I would say you it's exactly uh, five game ticks, uh, someone will tell me, no, it's not, because it doesn't work on my server. Yeah, that might be because of the plugins on your server, or on the uh, server you are playing on. And the second part is uh, the timing between these two. So this one, when activated, pushes this, and then you can activate this at a quite uh, the exact time because it takes, I, I think, two game ticks to extend the piston. So after two game ticks, no, uh, uh, it takes uh, four game ticks because it also has to interact or four or five, something like that. Uh, game ticks to extend and interact this piston, and then you can uh, break the second box. So this timing between these two is quite obvious. However, the timing between these two is also problematic because uh, this one breaks the box so it falls down and this one allows the hope to pick it up and you have a really short window here you could make this longer to be safer or make it easier for you or whatever you need so that's the main difficulty in building this I'm probably not going to make a tutorial on how to build this, like this is super obvious. You can see where the uh, observers all are facing. This, for example, depending on how let's say, disciplined the members on your server are, uh, you can change the clock rate of this thing so normally it should be uh, it should be activated at the same speed this produces because that's the worst case scenario however that's quite unlikely especially on more technical servers people have quite some IQ and can uh, tell if a box is full or not full and if they should throw it into the storage or not so you can make this for, uh, line here very slow. You can also put the droppers like this, and here put a uh, water stream. That's also a possibility if you want to make this like super crazy high speed. 
and also we will need to change this drop a line because this is limited to 18,000 items per hour as of right now but you can again put some ice here with some water and uh, use water streams for this or mine cards or whatever else you like so uh, don't limit yourself to, to by these two uh, drop lines these are just the simplest solution and the one i will be using most likely for the ultimate storage system because that one can only process items at 9000 uh oh sorry not 9000 boxes per hour and the power sources here i'm currently using the cheapest one that's the lever you could use other means like you could for example place one less one block uh, here so it touches this line of redstone and one for example one block lower so it touches this one it's up to you just make sure this signal strength is 13 you can see it nicely in the f3 menu or it's called actually power in this case power is a really bad term for that and here again get power 13 Yeah, that's probably all I have to say for for this machine. Uh, uh, when I was speaking about this one in one of my older videos, I uh, forgot that the piston here is placed like this. This would not work if you had two of these next to each other, or it might break if they activate at the same time, which is like the main goal of this machine. Uh, I don't know how this oversight happened. You want to have it, for example, like this or like this and break this one. I, I wasn't uh, making it up that it's uh, working or anything like that. This was just a small detail I noticed after making the video. Let's make it like this so it doesn't extend over the edge. And also a nice little detail about the ultimate storage system. I compacted the uh, clock mechanism here down and I also found another issue with quasi-connectivity with slices ne being next to each other. Uh, if you had the observer like I showed in the past, it would actually activate the slice next to it, which would break it if it was full and I forgot to test that for some random reason or maybe I tested it and I forgot that it didn't work whatever like it doesn't didn't make the much of a difference in the development phase uh, of course now I corrected it sadly it requires one more observer and the boxes are primary sorted here so it technically doesn't change the uh, uh, capacity but practically it does a bit which is quite interesting but that's not a huge deal two game things is survivable and also this actually saves you a couple observers like two or three i'm not exactly sure it definitely saves you a full block and uh i think i was using a type door there before so yeah Thank you guys all for watching, please like and subscribe and comment down any suggestions for me for future videos. I will certainly be working on all of the other parts of the Ultimate Storage System and we will also definitely see it being streamed uh, uh, on someone from Protech when we will build it. Currently it's not finished and I would appreciate all feedback to all of its parts Whatever you have to say, it's always nice. If you say something that doesn't make much sense, it's not the end of the world. Bye.